to so hello everyone to the second day of the Ask Crypto School. Um, we had very nice talks yesterday and today we continue with our very nice program. Today I'm very happy to introduce Alice Pellet Marie. So Alice is now a, a researcher at CNRS and the University of Bordeaux. And she, um, she has been a postdoctoral researcher also in, in Leuven, in COSIC and did her um, PhD in ENS, in, Le in Lyon, in the Ecole Normale Supérieure. She has worked intensively in, in lattices and she's particularly interested in um, analyzing the structure of uh, lattice problems and understanding why they are hard. And um, she will be talking today about uh, lattice-based crypto and focusing on crypto analysis and the challenges in, in this area. Ah, uh, oh, I think I, bef sorry, I think I did it wrong because before, uh, so I introduced Alice, but first I also wanted to say that um, today we have, um, after Alice, we have Thomas who's giving a talk, then we have a lunch break and Or Dunkelman will be giving a, um, a talk it will also it will be a talk for just one hour and after that hour there will be an ask me anything session that will be particularly interesting because there will be some surprise coming up so please use use your lunch time to think uh, questions the questions you always wanted to ask a cryptographer and you never dare to you can ask or dunkelman and um yes I think that's the important uh, uh, announcement. So, sorry for this uh, wrong order. And now let me say, give the floor to Alice, who will, I'm very much looking forward to this talk on lattice based crypto. So, Alice, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so um, this is going to be the first part of the, of the course on uh, lattice based crypto. And so Thomas is going to give the, the other part. Um, so in, in this part, what I want to discuss is the algorithmic problems that you can encounter when you work with lattices. So um, that's a very, a very broad picture. I don't hear you. Okay. Now we lost her. Oh. Mm. Alice? Okay. Yeah, she said she had a problem with the connection. Maybe we can wait yes. a little. Yes, we should wait a little bit, but maybe she doesn't know that we. Well, I hope she. Realizes. Yeah, we, <laughs> we don't have any plan B. Yeah, <laughs> Carla, please. <laughs> okay, I can jump in. You can. No. You can maybe like eliminate her from the session so she will realize that something is yes. not working. It will be bad. <laughs> uh, Natalia, Camila la puede sacar, yo no sé, no tengo poderes para. Eh, un segundo, profe. Maybe it was not such a good idea, the camera, because if your internet is not too good. No me deja, profe, me dice, solo eliminar permiso de co-anfitrión y ya, pero no la puedo. Y puedo detener que comparta pantalla. Dale, a ver, le quito el video. Y eliminar permiso de co-anfitrión. Dale. 
Listo. Y a ver, eliminar, sí. Dale, a ver. Listo. ¿Quieres que por ahora paremos la grabación? Sí, sí. Ok. Yeah, let's keep it like this. Ok. So, uh, go ahead. Ok, sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, I don't know where it crashed, but I didn't say a lot anyway. So, um, yes, yeah, so the plan of the two talks with Tomar is going, I mean, we want to cover uh, a bit everything, I mean, some important parts of lattice-based crypto, uh, which I, I represent in this picture. So, um, of course, you have cryptographic primitives that are like, for instance, signatures, uh, public key crypto. So, Tom is going to talk about key establishment. So, primitives you may want to build. When you want to build them, you use some underlying algorithmic problem. And when you want to use lattices, usually the problem you use, I guess some of you have heard about it, it's LW and CIS, the most famous one. But you can also use ring LWE or and true, maybe a bit less famous. And you also have some, I would say, underlying lattice problems that are much less famous than LWE and CIS, which are really, I mean, I want to make a distinction. All these things here, there are algorithmic problems based on lattices. But in the bottom one, you really see the lattice, whereas in LWE and CIS, you don't really see the lattice. And so we will discuss all this and why LWE is interesting, why the shortest vector problem is maybe less interesting for crypto and everything. So that's uh, what I am going to do in the first talk. So I'm going to talk a bit about lattices, the problems on lattices, how they relate to what I call the cryptographic problems uh, based on lattices, so everything like this. And in the second talk, uh, Thomas is going to explain how you can construct uh, cryptographic primitives from these uh, cryptographic problem based on lattices. So Thomas is probably not going to mention anything about really lattices. It's going to be hidden in this talk. And I'm not going to mention cryptographic primitives, so it's going to be for, for the second talk. Um, yeah, so something I didn't say, but of course, if you have question, just interrupt me anytime. Uh, I'm not sure I see when there is something in the chat, so just in case you can also interrupt me. Oh, I just saw something in the chat. What does NTRUE stand for? So NTRUE, is an acronym for something a bit, the name is weird, I can't remember it. Uh, I'm going to define what is true at the very end of the talk. It's something about ends root, the RU is for root of unity and T I forgot. Maybe ends root of unity, I don't remember. But it's a bit weird to understand. I mean, the name is not very, uh, yeah, not very, I, I, I don't understand the name. Um, yeah, so write in the chat any question or better just ask, interrupt me and ask. Um, okay, so let's go. Um, here is the, the outline of the talk. So I'm first going to define what is a lattice, uh, what are the what I call the lattice problems. So essentially the shortest vector problem and the closest vector problem. We're going to, to see the, them a bit. Um, then the second part is uh, defining like more standard lattice problem like LWE and CIS and how they relate to lattices. And then third part is going to, we're going to add some structure to this problem and obtain like ring LWE uh, and and true. Let's start with the lattice. So what is a lattice? Um, a lattice is kind of a, a grid in a very high dimension. So how do you formally define it? You take a basis. So you take a square matrix with, uh, which is invertible. 
So another way of seeing this matrix is that each colon of the matrix is a, is a vector. And these vectors are linearly independent. So here, it's a lattice in dimension two. I can take two linearly independent vectors. And then you take all integer linear combination of these vectors. So in my matrix, the columns are vectors. I'm seeing the, yeah, in the basis, I put the vectors in colon and not in rows. So you take all integer linear combination of these two red vectors here, and you get the, the black point. And you can do the same with the blue vectors, and you also get the same, the same lattice. So this is something important. You can have, and you will have, many different bases for the same lattice. So here is an example, but you could have, you have infinitely many bases for the same lattice. And um, yeah, that's the two things. The third thing is I'm going to say is the dimension of the lattice, while well, it's just the dimension of the space, right? The dimension of, uh, of the matrix of the basis of the lattice. So that's uh, some mathematical object. And we are doing crypto, we are doing computer science, so we want to manipulate lattices. So the first thing is how, how do we represent a lattice? Because a lattice is an infinite set of points. So how do you represent them? You cannot just store all the points. So, uh, I mean, we have defined bases, so you are going to represent a lattice with a basis of the lattice. Something which is important here for the, for the talk is I'm going to assume that any basis, I mean, my lattice is going to be represented by any basis, not necessarily the red one, but it could be the blue one. It could be one made with even longer vector. I mean, I don't really know. I just have a bunch of vectors and I know that they generate a lattice, but it's not necessarily the short vector, for instance. And so that's a way to represent a lattice. And now that we know how to, to like anchor the lattice on a computer, we might also wonder what kind of operations we can perform on lattices. Um, so here is a bunch of algorithmic problems you may want to, to perform on lattices. So again, your input is just any basis of any lattice. And I mean, a bunch of questions you may wonder, like I give you two bases, do they represent the same lattice? First question. Or, is one lattice included in the other lattice? Compute, can you compute the intersection of two lattices? So the intersection is also going to be a lattice, but can you compute the basis of it? Can you find short vector in the lattice? Can you find closed vector, a closed vector? Like I give you a target and I ask you what is the closest vector of the lattice from this target? All these kinds of questions. And so I wanted to start with a small quiz here. Um, so I don't see any more the React option, but I guess you have them. I don't see where I can see, but I would like you to vote for these five algorithmic problems, which one you believe are hard and which one you believe are easy. So um, <laughs> what I mean by easy is this can be done in polynomial time. And what I, what I mean by hard is, I mean, we don't know how to prove that something is hard, but at least for the moment, we don't have any polynomial time algorithm that solves this problem. So um, yeah, I don't, how can I see? If Maybe in participant. Oh. Hmm? We, we can react, for example. Yeah, so like... you should have some React options, like yes, no React. Mm -hmm. And I mean, let's start with the first one, like testing equality of lattices. Maybe you could vote if you think, like you say, yes, if you think it's easy, and no, if you think it's hard. So I don't... <laughs> So we have three yes, four yes. 
Yeah, so majority of, of yes. So, I mean, I don't have the solutions one by one, but this one is indeed something that we know how to do in polynomial time. And we're going to, to see it like just in the next slide. Um, for two, for option, for the, the second one, inclusion, uh, you can also maybe update your votes if you think it's easy or hard. <laughs> okay, it's, yeah, it's also something easy. Uh, intersect intersection of two lattices. This one is more subtle. <laughs> So I see three easy and two hard, <laughs> four easy. Yeah, so this one is a bit more, more difficult than just equality, but it's still something we can do in polynomial time. And I mean, let's do just uh, computing a short vector. What do you, what do you think? Like I give you a, a basis of a lattice, for instance, like any basis, like the blue basis here. And I ask you to find one of the red vectors, like one of the short vectors. So yeah, I get four easy and six hard. So it's actually something we call hard. So um, yeah, I'm laying, a, I mean, yeah, the question was not very, very uh, like, here is the solution. Um, so when I say hard here, I said no polynomial time algorithm. Uh, I didn't really mention polynomial time in, in which quantity. So actually, maybe I should have said that, but um, here I am going to consider lattices with uh, the, the size of my lattice is going to be the dimension n. So I want algorithms that scale polynomially with the dimension of the lattice. And so maybe you think here that it's easy to find the short vector because like we have a picture in dimension two and it's indeed easy to find one of the red vector. But when the dimensions start increasing, these problems are actually going to be hard. And that's the ones we are going to use for crypto. So and if I yeah, sorry. One question, because yes. uh, so because I guess also here for number four, it's also relevant if it, you mean uh, the shortest or like some approximation or something like this. Or, yeah. You know? So yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm also yeah. So actually, if you want a small approximation, it's still hard. But you're right that the larger the approximation you allow, the easiest it becomes. So we have some trade-offs between hardness and approximation factor. And I, I'm going to, to show you how they compare, like how, how the hardness degrades when you allow for some larger approximation factor. Right. So here, let's say for the moment, I want to find like the shortest vector of a lattice, really shortest vector, which is not zero because of course zero is always in a lattice, but it's not very interesting. So yeah, so we are going to focus on- um, Sorry, the... sorry, um, Lati, uh, Alice, I will tell you when there is a question in the chat because then you don't have to watch, okay, no? Thank you. Yeah, okay, sometimes I see it, but uh, not always. So there is here one, please, are lattices endowed with a vector space structure? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so lattices, they live in a vector space, like here, this lattice in dimension two, it lives in R2. Uh, vector space because uh, Z, which is a ring only. So it's like a bit, <coughs> sorry. It's a bit different from a vector. I mean, it's a module, it's a Z module. So it's like a vector space over Z essentially. So you cannot do exactly the same thing as you would do with vector space. For instance, like if you have linearly independent vectors, it's not necessarily a basis. That's kind of the subtlety you can see. But 
it's almost a vector space, but over Z. Uh, yeah, it's a kind of discrete vector space. Okay, so let's just um, do a small first exercise. And I, I will give you like two minutes to try to see if you can come up with an algorithm to test uh, inclusion of lattices and equality. So I didn't describe it. I think I wrote it, but didn't mention it. But here, what I when I write L of B, it's the lattice span by the basis B, right? So if the first question is, if I have two matrix B1, B2, how can I test if the lattice span by B1 is included in the lattice span by B2? And the second question is, how can I test equality? So maybe I should have said that you should take some paper and pencil. I have a bunch of small exercises like that. Okay, let's, I mean, I don't want you to wait too much. So let's just do the, do it together. Um, so inclusion, how do you test inclusion? Um, so if the lattice span by B1 is included in the lattice span by B2, it means that every vector of B1 is included in the lattice span by B2. So every vector of B1 can be written as B2 times some integer vector, right? An integer linear combination of the of the colon of B2. So essentially every vector of B1, so B1 can be written as B2 times a matrix which has integer coefficients. And this you can test by just computing B2, B1 times inverse of B2, and you just test if it's something with integer coefficients or not. And that's very efficient. It's just linear algebra, like inverting a matrix, computing a product of matrices, and checking for integrity. The second testing equality, once you know how to test inclusion, is just you test two inclusions, right? So if you do, if you can do inclusion, you can do equality. Okay, so that's. I mean, what I wanted to show here is essentially basic operations on lattices we know how to do, like usual linear algebra, algebra, inclusion, equality, intersection. So we are not going to do the intersection because it's maybe a bit less easy, but all this kind of stuff we know how to do. But the more geometric problems like finding short vector or finding closed vectors, these are the difficult ones. And so here is the formal definition of these problems. So the shortest vector problem, which is usually abbreviated as SVP, is like you want to find, you again, your input is any basis of your lattice, and you want to find a vector which is non-zero, which is as short as possible. And lambda 1 is going to be the Euclidean length of this short vector. And the closest vector problem you are given a lattice plus some target T, which is somewhere in the real space spanned by the lattice. And you want to find um, the point of the lattice that is as close as possible to your target. And so these are the exact problems, but uh, we can define approximations for these problems. So in an approximation, variant, you have like some approximation factor, and you don't want to find the shortest vector, but something that is at least gamma times the length of the shortest vector, and gamma is going to be your approximation factor. 
And the same thing for the closest vector problem, you can find something that is not too far away from the target. And so I said, these are hard problems. So how, what do I mean by that? Um, so again, it's hard when the dimension of the lattice is, is big. And they're supposed to be hard even if you have a quantum computer. So even with a quantum computer, we don't know polynomial time algorithm to solve this problem. So that's why we like them because we can construct post-quantum cryptography from them. And so they are still hard with small approximation factor. So as long as your approximation factor is polynomial in the dimension, it's still very hard to, to solve. When the approximation factor starts becoming like sub-exponential, it becomes easier, but it's still hard for any small polynomial approximation factor. Um, yeah, so let's see like another exercise. Um, so it's hard when the dimension is large, but dimension two is, is not large. So, I mean, let's try to solve these problems, the shortest vector problem and the closest vector problem in dimension two. So you have a basis of the lattice, you have a target vector, and I will give you again two minutes to try to find a shortest vector in this lattice and a closest vector to T uh, in the lattice. So this is the coordinate of the, the target. And you can send in the chat your solution if you if you find it. So just a hint, maybe if you don't know how to start. I mean, in dimension two, you can draw everything. So you can try just to, to draw the vectors and, and see if you can find something. Somebody in the chat is asking Alice, what is the metric? So. I guess what is the metric? What, hmm. Yeah, what is the, well, okay, what do I mean by the, the size of a vector? So it's just Euclidean, like Euclidean lens. I, I take the square root of first coordinate square plus second coordinate square. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, you can consider um, infinity norm, like the maximum of the coordinates, or you can consider L1 norm or anything. Here, I'm going to consider Euclidean norm. So the usual square root of x squared plus y squared. So should I wait more? Did anyone find a short vector or the closest vector to T? Yeah, so the subtraction of the two columns, yeah, you're right. So let me have the on the, the picture. So I did it. Uh, I didn't draw all the points by hand. So it was maybe a bit faster than to do it by hand. But yeah, so here are the two vectors. So here you can count like 10 and 2 and 13 and 2. So that's the basis. And then you get like the points of the lattice. And the shortest vector 
uh, I mean, it's actually not the shortest vector. The subtraction of the two vectors here, it gives you something very short, but it's not the shortest one. The shortest one is going to be like this one, which has uh, Euclidean length, like square root of five, when the, the subtraction of the two vectors is size three, so it's slightly larger. But yeah, that's, I mean, you when you draw this, you see that the difference of the two vectors is small. So you can take these small vectors and you can subtract it to reduce the size of the other two vectors. And I mean, we're going to see an algorithm to do that more efficiently than just uh, moving everything around. I mean, and that, that works in this case, right? Yeah. Because I'm, we could have. I mean, Sorry? that thing of like that thing of subtracting the, the columns works because we have a basis with two vectors that are pretty close, right? Yeah, so in this case, it turns out that the subtraction of the two vectors, two basis vectors, is very small. Okay. It's not the but smallest. That... Sorry? No, what I want to say is that in this case, it has a special form, but the, the generalization of this idea, subtracting the one from the other would be to subtract um, integer um, multiples yeah. of. Yeah. Um, ah, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we will see uh, like how to do that in full generality. Here it's indeed a special shape, like you just have to subtract one. And yeah, once you draw all the points, you also easily see what is the closest point to the target. I mean, it's easier with a computer that draws all the points for you, and then you just look look at the solution. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that was a, a good question about like the subtraction. Does it always work? And so I. There is an algorithm in dimension two, there is actually a, a polynomial time algorithm that finds the shortest vector of any lattice, like efficiently and anything. It's called Lagrange Gauss. So it's attributed to, to both. Uh, I don't really know which, uh, I mean, who did what, but. Um, and I actually wanted to share a video to describe the algorithm. So let me. Uh, Stop sharing and sharing the video. Uh, yeah, so, so here is like a generic case, the basis vector, they do not even need to have integral coordinates, like it's just real numbers. You have two vectors and you would like to, to reduce them. So the general idea is the following. So you, you first, uh, you rotate the space so that B1 becomes horizontal. So that's the first step. It's, Nothing is happening, right? Just a rotation of the space. But when you rotate this space, and if B1 is horizontal, you have one coordinate that is zero in the basis. And once you have this shape, you can reduce the second vector by using the first vector. So it's the second step. Because now when you remove multiples of the first vectors of B1 to B2, you just act on the first coordinate. So you just try to find the integral multiple of B1 that reduces the most the first coordinate of B2. So it's a Euclidean division kind of. So here you remove it twice and then you get a shorter vector B2. And then you just swap the two vectors and start again the same process until your basis is reduced. And you can show that if you do that polynomial number of times, then you end up with a basis which is optimal. Like B1 is the shortest vector and B2 is the second shortest vector of the lattice. So yeah, it's always the same. 
you make B1 horizontal, then you reduce the first coordinate of B2 with integer multiple of B1. And you get something small. And now you are done. I mean, you should swap again B1, B2, because you want B1 to be the shortest one, and then you are done. So that's something that works. Like, that's kind of uh, what, what you wanted to do in the previous thing, like subtract. But it's a way to really find how, how you should subtract to make it as small as possible in an optimal way. Uh, Can I ask something? Yes. Um, so when you say that you rotate, in yes. algebraically, what does it mean? Does it mean it means like some kind of Gaussian elimination to? to... It's QR factorization of the basis. Ah, okay. So QR factorization, the Q part gives you the rotation and the R part gives you the final basis, like which is triangular. So the bottom coordinates are zero. The left, bottom left coordinate is zero. So yeah, QR can be seen as kind of a rotation of the space that makes your first vector horizontal. And if the dimension is larger, it's also, but here it's just dimension two. So yeah, so QR is efficiently done on a computer. By hand, it's a bit heavy to do. So yeah, I didn't ask you to do that. Um, yeah, so uh, that's in dimension two. And again, so there is really something different, right? In dimension two, it's easy, but when the dimension increases, it's hard to do. And um, how hard is it? So here is, um, it's kind of answers your question about the approximation factor. So the best algorithm we have to find sharp vectors in, in lattices is called BKZ algorithm. It's an algorithm where you have some, uh, you can choose the approximation factor you want to reach. And depending on the approximation factor you want, it's going to take more or less time. So here you see that if you want a small approximation factor, like polynomial in the, di in the dimension of the lattice, the runtime of BKZ is going to be exponential in the dimension. So when the dimension is two, it's exponential two, so it's fast, but whenever the dimension starts increasing, it's going to become very complicated very fast. On the other hand, if you have a, a large approximation factor, like exponentially large approximation factor, then you can do that in polynomial time. So this algorithm here, the very end of the, the BKZ trade-off, it's also known as LLL algorithm. And it's a kind of generalization of the lagrange gauss algorithm I just showed you, but in larger dimension. So it's still polynomial time, but you don't get the shortest vector like you did in dimension two, you get only something that is maybe two to the n times larger than the shortest vector. So it's not so good. And you have everything in between, like you have trade-off between the time you spend and the approximation factor you obtain. <coughs> so that's um, the what I mean by it's hard. And well, of course, if you want to do cryptography, you want the problems to be as hard as possible. So you are going to use these problems in a regime with small approximation factor, because then the best algorithm that exists is exponential in the dimension. So you want it to be, to be long to find short vectors or solve the closest vector problem. Okay, so just to give you some numbers, because I'm saying the dimension has to be large, it's increasing, like everything here is asymptotic. So what, what dimension should we choose in crypto um, to, to, to have security? 
So we have seen that dimension two is not a good choice. It's very efficient, very easy in practice. Um, up to dimension 80, maybe 100, if you have good, uh, good implementation, you can find short vectors in lattices in a few minutes, like uh, on your laptop. Um, the current record for finding short vectors in uh, a lattice is dimension 170. It was like a bit computation with optimized parallel code on like some very big computer for a few days. So it's not something you can run on your laptop. And in cryptography, like in the submission to the NIST, the dimension is usually between 500 and 1000. So it's, I mean, the difficulty is increasing very fast with the dimension. So it's, this is much larger than 170, right? Here, when we have, like when we have a new ID and much optimized code, maybe we gain 10, but before going from 170 to 500, there is a, a big gap. And so, yeah, so I wanted to, to do some, some tests. So I wanted you to try uh, Sage Mass to, to, to run uh, lattice reduction on Sage. So um, instead of writing this, the code in the slide, I put it on a, an exercise sheet that is on my web page. So here is a, a link to it, but you cannot click on it. So it's maybe hard to, to write. But if you go on my web page and on maybe the, you can share the link in the chat. Oh, <laughs> yes, of course I can. I'm not that used to, to Zoom. Oh, for some reason. Yeah, so it's not a good link. I mean, there is a, let me write it again. This is up, this should be okay. So uh, I'm going also to share the, the exercise sheet here. Um, so. Yeah, so if you if you have stage mat on your computer, you can just run it. Um, otherwise, you can I'm running it. Otherwise, you can just um, like use CoCalc. So here on the worksheet, you have the, the link, and you can uh, I mean create some without any account or anything. You just create some Sage worksheet, and you can run. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a bit slow, but not that much when I tried it, and you can you can run. Uh, sage on it. So what what is the, the exercises I would like you to to test? So I'm claiming that on a laptop you can reach a dimension 80, 100, like finding short vectors in dimension 80, 100. Um, so just so here you can import like some library for lattices. Try with first dimension 10. You generate a random basis. So use this like generator to generate the basis. We will see, see why in a few minutes. And then just try to find short vectors in it by running the shortest vector uh, algorithm and see how long it takes and then increase the dimension until you, you cannot do it anymore. So I'm going to do it also. Uh, and we will see when. I mean, I, I don't know if we will get different, uh, like if the dimension is going to, to vary from one computer to another. So that's something you can share, uh, you can write on the chat which dimension you, you are able to reach. Uh, okay, maybe I should share all my screen.
So can you? I don't know what I'm sharing. Oh, it's too much. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to share only the, oops. Okay, so let's run everything. Okay, so dimension 10 for me is really, really fast. So let's try dimension 20. So it's still fast. Let's go for 40. Forty is already five seconds. Uh, I mean, did anyone try to, to run Cocalc? Are you having problems with it? I'm trying, but once I wrote what do I have to press? Sorry? I, I, I create uh, the, the file and everything. I wrote everything and now do I have to press something? Oh, um, usually it's maj enter. Like, uh, no, maj is French. Like the, like when you want to make a capital letter, right? You press oh, okay. this plus enter and then it, it run. It should run it. It's run. Or there should be maybe also some way to press run on top of Cocalc, but then you don't know what, what you are running. So yeah, it's better to just. Yeah, so 40 seems to be already like quite a lot for me, 45. So whenever it starts becoming a bit long, don't increase the dimension too much because it's really like you can have a, the time can double in a few dimensions. So 45. Yeah, I think 45 will be the maximum I can, I can reach. Yeah, like 10, 15 seconds for 45, maybe I can reach 50, but not much more. So you can, yeah, you can continue if you were trying to do that. I'm going to stop sharing this. Yeah, dimension 60 is probably a bit too much. Uh, yeah, okay, so we all stop, I guess, around dimension 50. Um, so when I tried it, when I prepared the, the slides, I actually could reach dimension 57. But when I tried it again yesterday, it was 45, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if Cocalc has, I mean, I'm not even running it on Cocalc, I was running it on my computer. So maybe also because I changed. So here you can see I'm asking to use the algorithm from Paris to, to run it. Maybe there are better algorithms. So yeah, here when I say you can reach dimension 80 on your personal laptop, it's like not very correct. Um, it's like if you have some, like you cannot do that with Sage. Sage is more like 50 and you, you need to have some, so there are some libraries that are more optimized to, to find short vectors in matrices. So, yeah. Oh, one question. Yeah. So what is the like size of the, what is the space basically? Is it like a Z 
P something or is it like as big an integer you get or what's the space for the lattice problem that we are solving right now using Sage? So here the, the I mean the dimension is the dimension of no, the, the, the but each vector the coordinates of each vector could be like up to thirty two bit integer oh, yeah. or is it like a ZP or some prime? Yeah, so the coordinates of, of the vector. So if you look at um, how I generate the matrix B, I put something like so the vectors are going to be of the order of the Q parameter which I chose to be a uh, square of the dimension, roughly. Okay, So the, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's dimension n and size of the coefficients roughly n square. And here the n square need not be a prime, it could be any integer is fine. Yeah. For lattices. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, or we need a. Any. No, okay, so field or something need, is not required. Doesn't need to be a prime. I, I don't know why I put like next prime, but uh, it's not. It's not needed. Okay. Thanks. It should not. It should not change that much. <coughs> okay, so that concludes the first part, and I guess we can do a three, four minutes break if you want to take some water, if you want to ask questions at the time and we will resume like at maybe two before, two before nine or around nine. Nine is a bit too long break. Let's say two before nine. Maybe you can tell us what uh, in this uh, generate random lattice basis B so what do these parameters all mean? Maybe it's yeah, yeah. So this that's is related that you that you just explained, but I, I, if you can repeat. Yeah, so I don't really know um, how this like crypto gen lattice works. What kind of lattice it generates? But essentially. Um, yeah, so the dimension is going to be the parameter m. Uh, the parameter n also plays a role on the, like is important. So it, yeah, so kind of, um, if you know about LWE, so I'm going to mention that later on, but for those who know about LWE, it's going essentially to generate a lattice associated to an LWE instance with modulus q and dimension of the secret n and dimension of the number of samples, which is m. So, I mean, I wanted, uh, we are going to see like in the, the second part that depending on how you generate the basis of your lattice, it can be easy. Like if you just take a random lattice, a random matrix, usually the lattice you obtain is a lattice in which it's easy to find the short vector. So in order to create here, I wanted you to try like real hard lattices because otherwise you can reach very high dimension and it's not like, uh, yeah, it's not representative of what you can do because I wanted to show you how like on the hard instances, how the algorithm performs. So this is just a way to generate a, a hard lattice which corresponds to some LWE instance. So it's Hard if LWE is hard. Okay. And the parameters are the one of LWE. Okay. I have another general question. Yeah. So what? So what is the intuition behind like finding short vectors being hard? Like, is there like when a dimension increases, are there many points in that you don't yeah. know which dimension to go or something? Yeah, you're right. So when the dimension increases, usually the number of short vectors. Like, if you take 
uh, like all the vectors that have length between, so lambda one is a minimal one, and let's say two lambda one. So like vectors with very similar, very small Euclidean norm, you will have an exponential amount of them. So that's kind of the difficulty. You have a lot of them. I mean, no, I don't know. If it explains the hardness. Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of, I guess the hardness is that in dimension n, you really have exponentially many vectors. Like if you start with a basis and just try to consider all integer linear combination of your basis, you get a lot and a lot of vectors. And if you take, yeah, if you take a sphere, for instance, and, and you take random vectors inside the sphere, they are very likely to be on the, on the border of the sphere. The interior of a sphere is like the volume is exponentially smaller than the volume of the border. Kind of all the weights is always on the on the exterior of anything, like on a, a sphere, a square, anything. It's always like in the angles when it's far away from the center. So it's hard to find what's what is small because the, the size is very small compared to the size of, of the rest of the. I, I don't have much better than that to explain the harness, uh, except that people have tried and didn't manage to, to find algorithms also. I mean, the algorithm we have, they, have, they run in exponential time because they kind of enumerate all points and the number of points is exponential. And then they try to find the smallest one in all the points that have been enumerated. So it's kind of related okay. to this high number of points. Thanks. OK, so let's resume with the second part. So unless, unless there is more questions on lattices and lattice problems. But. Yeah, otherwise we will move on to more cryptographic problems. So we have seen lattices and some problems that are believed to be hard. Um, and yeah, let's go to, to more cryptographic problems. So if we cannot reach the third point, it's not very important. I put it because I was afraid it would be too small or so, uh, too short, but yeah, it's not so important. Um, I don't think Thomas is going to, to need any structured lattices. OK, so why, why don't we use the shortest vector problem and the closest vector problem to, to construct cryptographic primitives? We have seen that they are hard, so we could use them. Uh, the difficulty is that it's hard in the worst case. So what I mean by it's hard in the worst case, it means we don't have an algorithm that works for any lattice. Like I cannot give you, I cannot say here is my algorithm and give me any lattice and any basis of the lattice, I'm going to find a short vector. But it's not really nice for cryptography because it could be that for most of the lattices, it's easy to find short vectors. There are just a few lattices that are hard to solve. I mean, not a few, but a lot of them, but which are very infrequent when you sample a lattice randomly. And then if you want to do crypto, you are going to generate a random lattice, but probably this one is going to be easy. You just know that in the worst case, it's hard. So that's one of the problem. And uh, to illustrate it, I would like, like to do the second exercise of the, of the worksheet, um, which is, so we're going to do the same thing as we did in the first exercise, which so is still with Sage. Uh, but this time, we, we generate a random basis, um, like the matrix B. We are just going to use Sage function, which is random matrix uh, with integer coefficients and dimension dim. So that's, I mean, maybe the, the most natural way of doing it. And you will see that for this, if you generate your basis like this, it's actually very easy to find short vectors 
in, in your lattice. And you can reach much larger dimensions uh, by doing this. So let's do that together. Or you can also try on your own and see if you reach the same dimension as I reach. Um, so I'm just changing the way I generate the, the basis of the lattice. So now I'm going to take B to be a random matrix. So it's faster in dimension 45. Um, let me go to dimension 100 from because I, I already know when it's going to be slow. So 100 is still like five seconds, maybe. Uh, so, so, so what is the difference between the two basis generation? So in random matrix, I don't know exactly what it does. But I think it's just sample random, I mean, take a square matrix and sample every coordinate, maybe from minus 10, 10. I don't really know what is the range, like how it generates a random integer, but I guess it's something like uniform in some small range or maybe Gaussian, or I don't know. And then each coefficient is sampled this way. In the sage.crypto uh, gen lattice that we were using before, it's a special way of sampling a uh, basis that is made explicitly hard. I, I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's a, a really a special kind of matrix that we know is hard for finding short vectors. So it's related to LWE and I'm going to define it like in a few minutes. Thanks. But if, if you do it just naively and say, okay, I'm going to take a matrix, generate each coefficient of my matrix randomly, and then hope that it's hard, you can see that actually you can reach dimension like 150 very easily. Whereas before it was like 50 was already hard. So uh, it's, I think 170 was the maximum I could reach. So it really like depends on, on the basis you choose and on the dimension of the lattice and not sorry, on the, yeah, on the choice of how you sample your basis. Okay, let's stop at 170. Yeah, I think we, you can reach like at least 170, maybe even 200, maybe 200 is a bit too much. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's really, I wanted to highlight that it's hard to use the shortest vector problem like this because you don't really know how to generate a hard lattice. And that's, uh, that's why we, we like problems like LWE because it gives you a way, I mean, the main idea of LWE is that it gives you a way to generate random lattices that are hard. So uh, this is what we call average case problem. It's something that is hard on average. Like you know that when you sample something with very high probability, it's going to be hard to find short vectors uh, in this lattice. So let's not start with LWE, but with a short integer solution problem, which is maybe the, the easiest one. It was introduced before LWE, so in 96 by Aitai. It's a bit less famous than LWE because it's a bit harder, I think, to, to use for constructions. Um, so you have two parameters here. You have a modulus Q. So everything is going to be modulo Q. And you have B, which is a bond on some size, on some, I mean, a bond on some integers. And um, you should imagine that B is much smaller than Q. So everything that is smaller than B is going to be small. We're going to say small and things that are of the order of magnitude of Q, it's large. 
And yeah, if you have not familiar with this notation, ZQ is just Z mod Q. So what is the cis problem? It's I'm going to sample a, a rectangle matrix A uniformly. And I'm going to ask you to find a short vector in the kernel, in the left kernel of A, so modulo Q. So if A is square, you usually will have only one vector. I mean, the, the kernel is going to be reduced to zero. But when A is rectangle like this, the kernel is a subspace of Z mod Q. And um, if this subspace is large enough, you can just by counting a counting argument and uh, you, you can prove that you will have some vectors in the in the kernel with very small coordinates. And the cis problem is well, just find find one of these vectors. So. I think we lost, uh, oh, you're back. We lost you for a second. Alice, we lost you. Hello? Okay, now you're back. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I don't know when when it stopped, but uh, yeah, so this is some linear algebra, like when you define it, right? Um, and yeah, so it's not clear that it's uh, a lattice problem, but the first thing I wanted to say is that you can prove so something very powerful which is that if you can uh, solve this, so if you can find small x such that x a is zero mod q, if you can solve this with like, not necessarily for all matrices a, but for almost all, like with for team one minus two to the, uh, sorry, 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 not this way. If you can solve this for a non-negligible amount of matrices A. Like if there is a probability two to the minus 80 that you are able to solve this, then it means that you can find short vector in any lattice in dimension N. Yeah, I wrote wrong, but wrong is just a dimension. So it's very powerful, right? If it says, as long as there is one lattice in which it's hard to find a short vector, then you will never be able to, to solve this on average. Like when you sample A, there is a negligible probability that someone is able to find a small x, such that xA is 0 mod q. And so that's nice for crypto. It's an average case problem. And it's something that is hard on average. And yeah, so um, what's, what's the relation with lattices? Because for the moment, it's just like a product of matrices, modulo Q, it's really just linear algebra. So there is a lattice behind. Uh, I don't know if, if you see it, but... Uh, oops. I was looking at the chat and now I cannot close it anyway. Um, yeah, so what's the lattice? So the lattice behind is I'm going to take all integer, ve integer vector x such that x times a is zero modulo q. So that's a lattice you can check. Um, if you take, so a way to check that something is a lattice is just, you need to check that the sum of two elements is still in the, in the set. And that if you multiply something by 
yeah, not just the sum, sum and subtraction. And I mean, you also need to check that if you multiply by some integer, it's still in the set, but then it's just the same at summing a lot of times. So here you can check that it's a lattice. And so what is this asking? Well, this is just asking to find a short element in this lattice, right? Small x such that xa is zero mod q. So you can draw the lattice and this is just a shortest vector problem uh, in this lattice. So let's apply this. And so since, so this is a shortest vector problem. So you can solve this by solving, finding short vector in a lattice, right? You can find a short solution to xa equals zero mod q by constructing the lattice corresponding to this and finding a short vector in this lattice. So the third exercise of the, of the sheet is um, some, some special cis instance. So it's in small dimension because, I mean, we have seen that in large dimension, it's hard. So it's dimension five and not dimension 10. Yeah, dimension 10. 10. So um, here the objective is, so the matrix, I didn't write all the coordinates of the matrix. You can just generate it by fixing the random seed and, and then taking a, a random matrix. And so the objective is to, I mean, the most difficult part is to construct the lattice corresponding to this. So that's an exercise also to see if you can construct, if you, if you understand how to, to construct the lattice associated to this. So maybe I should share uh, the, the slide because the definition of the lattice is on the slide. Yeah, so the, the first question is really like, not necessarily construct a basis of the lattice, I just want um, <clears throat> vectors that generate the lattice. So if you have too much of them, too many of them, it's not a problem. Just as long as any point of the lattice is a combination of these vectors, um, it's, it's okay. I'm going to okay, so let's maybe do do that together. Um, I'm going to share. So okay, so this is my my cis uh, matrix. So yeah, just something important when you work with Sage is that Sage always puts the, the vectors in in rows and not in columns. So you have to transpose everything in your head. And also here you want to find something on the. I mean, what's important here is not the left kernel of A, but the right kernel of A. So here I've defined my matrix, which is defined modulo Q. So Q is 127. Uh, so the first vectors that are uh, in, in the, I mean, that generate the, the lattice, the cis lattice is the, the right kernel of, of the base of the, of the matrix. So if I compute here, I can compute the right kernel of, of A. So it's going to give me all the vectors mod Q such that A times X is zero mod Q. So I get a bunch of vectors like this. Um, 
but I don't have all the vectors because if you, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not sharing my slides anymore, but you wanted all the integer vectors such that x times a is zero mod q. So you also want to add all the q zero zero, I mean, all vectors that are multiple of q, they are in your cis lattice. So you also want to add to this like another set of vectors, which is just the set of all q times identity, all multiples of q, they are vectors in the cis lattice. And if you combine the kernel of A plus all these vectors, then you get not a basis because you have too many vectors, but you get something that generates the cis lattice. So you can just create the concatenation of the two. So I'm just here, I'm just concatenating all my vectors. And once this is done, actually the rest of the exercise is, is it's easy because uh, I can define just a lattice. I don't need to have a basis to define a lattice. If I have a, a general thing set, it's sufficient. So I can just uh, compute a short vector in this. I get some solution x. I can check that it's small. And I can also check that uh, a times x is 0. So it's indeed something that is in 0 mod q. And it has small coordinates. So this is a way to solve this. Here it's dimension 10, so it's fast in larger dimension, it's, it's harder. Uh, yeah, so really, um, maybe you don't see it when you define this with just matrices, but it's really a lattice problem. It's really just, you have a lattice behind, and it's really just SVP, shortest vector problem in some lattice. Okay, so here is the code I used. Uh, it's not, it's not important. Okay, LWE. So LWE is more famous than CIS, but also a bit maybe harder to define. Uh, you still have a modulus Q and B, which is a bond on something small. And how do you get an LWE sample? You sample a uniform matrix again. And now you are going to sample two small elements. So a small vector S, which has the same dimension as uh, the number of columns of the matrix A, and a small noise E, which is the same dimension of the number of rows. And then you just compute A times S plus E. This gives you some vector, and the LWE problem asks to recover S or E. So it's the same thing to recover S and to recover E, because if you get, if you can recover E, for instance, you can remove it from B, and then you can recover S because you know the matrix A, and it's just linear algebra. From A times S to recover S, you have more equations than unknown, so you can recover S. So what makes the problem difficult is really like this noise. That's why it's learning with errors, it's you have some errors and then it's hard to recover S. So it's equivalent, like if you recover S, you can recover E, if you recover E, you can recover S. Um, let's skip this. So just I'm just going to mention, but we're not going to prove it. Um, so if uh, sometimes S is not small, but it's just uniform mod Q, and it's essentially the same as small s. So you can take whatever you like. If you prefer to have some small s, you can take it small. If you prefer to have s uniform, you take it uniform. OK, and like for cis, you can prove that if someone is able to solve LWE with some non-negligible probability, then you can use it to, be, to solve the shortest vector problem in any lattice. So it's again a nice average test problem, which is at least as hard as solving finding short vectors in any lattice. And again, so LWE is a lattice problem. So what is the lattice behind LWE? It's the lattice of all vectors x that can be written as a times s plus some multiple of q. 
So you take all vectors that are in the Q span of uh, A, and this gives you uh, a lattice. So again, you can check that it's a lattice. And what is LW? So LW is you have some point B, which is A times S plus some small E. So it's something in the lattice plus something small. So it's a closest vector problem. You get something which is close to a lattice point and recovering S or recovering E is the same as finding the closest lattice point. So uh, LWE is, is uh, uh, an average case, is a, uh, is a closest vector problem in this lattice associated to, to the instance. So again, even if you don't see it on the definition, it's really a lattice problem. And if you want to solve LWE, you're going to define the lattice. So we, we won't do it, but you're going to define the lattice and solve the closest vector problem in the lattice. So the best algorithms we have to solve LWE, they do that. They say, oh, here is the lattice. Let's solve it using lattice reduction. So if I sum up, uh, what's important about CIS and LWE is that they are average case problem. So it's good for crypto because you know that when you sample a random matrix, then the LWE instance or the CIS instance associated to this matrix is going to be hard to solve with probability one minus something very, very small. So you can generate hard instances. And a way to see LWE and CIS is that it gives you a way to generate average case shortest vector problem instances or closest vector problem instances that are hard on average. So we have seen like if you sample a, a random basis for a lattice, it's usually not hard. But if you sample a lattice that is associated to LWE or to CIS, then it's going to be hard on average. So that's why we use that in crypto and don't, we don't use directly shortest vector problem or closest vector problem because we don't, I mean, we don't know how to generate hard instances of that. But a way to do that is to use the lattices generated by CIS and LW. So it's essentially LW and CIS. So I don't know if it's very clear. Uh, no question so far, so let's move on. So, yeah, so we have seen LWE and CIS, and there is also something else I would like to, to discuss. It's uh, LWE, you can have a, a decisional variant of the problem, because the one I described so far is like you have to recover the secret, but uh, when you do construction, you like decisional problems more than uh, search problems. So uh, here is uh, the definition of the decision at W problem. So you generate B as before, like A, S plus E, or sometimes you also sample B uniform. I mean, you, you, you toss a coin and depending on the coin, either you generate B as A, S plus E, or you take B uniform. And the decision at W problem is to distinguish if it's uniform or if it's something like A, S plus E. And uh, you can prove that if you can solve decision LW, you can also recover the secret. So it's equivalent as hard as finding uh, as the LW problem I just defined before. And it's better for crypto because it's weaker. Like it's not asking to recover, but just to distinguish. And so when you do security games, so Tom is going to do that. Uh, it's easier to say, oh, I'm sampling B from LWE and by decision LWE assumption, I can just replace that by something uniform because, uh, because it's, it's uh, I mean, it's indistinguishable from uniform. So that's much easier to use. Can I ask something? Yes. Um, so two questions. The first question is, um, so when you describe the hardness of these problems, you you don't say uh, you, it only depends on on n right so what yes. about b what about b how um, does it depend how much so b is the size of the solution so yeah. how so how yes. does it depend on this yes yeah, so actually um 
when you construct a lattice, uh, the lattice, the LWE lattice from uh, your instance, the dimension of the lattice is not going to be uh, to be n. So yeah, I, I updated my slides and here it's not good because I'm assuming my matrix is square, but it's not square, it's rectangle. So usually you have like n is the smallest dimension and m is the largest dimension in LWE. And the dimension of the lattice is not n because it's uh, it's it's m usually the dimension of the lattice you define here. Let's maybe we can do that on cis because it's usually easier to to view. Uh, so in cis you take elements like of dimension m that are in the kernel of so it's the largest dimension that. Um, gives you the dimension of the lattice, not the small one. So it's not the dimension of the secret, but the dimension of the error. And then you have to take some trade-offs because uh, intuitively the largest M is, the easiest the problem should be. Like in LWE, if you have more samples, uh, you have more information, so it becomes easier. But the lattice you create is going to have a very large dimension. So what you do is you take the minimum, you, you are going to forget a part of A to have a lattice of dimension as small as possible, but you want um, that A is still tall enough so that there is a solution. Like in CIS that there is a solution or in LWE that you want that the solution is unique. You are going to keep just enough samples so that the solution is unique, but you don't want too much because then the dimension of the lattice you create is, is large. And this number of solution is going to depend on B, on Q, on M and on N. So it's going to depend on all the parameters of LWE in different ways. And so the dimension of the lattice you get in the end depends on how small is B compared to Q and the dimension of the secret n. So it's not exactly n, it's something yeah, that depends on everything. Uh, yeah, any other question? Okay, so we, we can have a decision variant of LWE, which is easier to use. That's what I wanted to say in crypto. So if I kind of summarize everything, we have three equivalent problems. Oh, I didn't say that so far, so that's not the summary. It's, so we have seen that decision LWE is equivalent to search LWE. And uh, I'm telling you that it's also equivalent to the short integer solution problem. So all these problems, they are, uh, as hard, roughly, so it's everything depends on the parameters you choose and it's not an exact science, but you have, you can prove that if you can solve one, you can solve the other one, maybe not with the same parameters. Sometimes you lose a bit, but it's at a high level, it's the same thing, the same hardness. And yeah, maybe we can do a small exercise on that. So. Uh, I would like to prove that if you can solve um, CIS, the short integer solution problem, then you can solve decisional, decisional WE. So say differently, if you have a matrix A, and if you know a small solution X such that X times A is zero mod Q, I want you to distinguish between something that is an LWE sample and something that is uniform mod Q. So it's <clears throat> not very hard to distinguish. I will give you like one or two minutes. Uh, if you have any ID, just write it in the chat. Um,
Yeah, so I see it on the chat. So we can multiply x by b or b by x. I don't know why close the chat. Um, yeah, so that's indeed the, the ID. So if you multiply, so if you have a small x such that xa is zero mod b, you can just compute x times b. If you were in the case where b is a s plus e, what you get is x times a s plus x times e. So x times a is zero mod q, and you just have x in our product between x and e, and this is small. And on the other hand, if B is uniform, X in our product B is something to be, is going to be uniform mod Q and uniform is going to be much larger than B usually. So you can distinguish like this. And we are not going to do the other direction, but you can also show that if you can solve uh, LWE, you can also solve this. So it's equivalent. Uh, there was a question in the chat about what's the difference when the noise is Gaussian and when it's uniform. So essentially it's uh, the same. So you are again going to lose. So usually the noise is taken from a Gaussian distribution. So that's true because when you want to prove that it's at least as hard, no, that it's that LWE is at least as hard as finding short vectors in all lattices, you already use the properties of the Gaussian distribution. But then you can kind of, if you have a Gaussian noise, you can just add some uniform noise much bigger than the Gaussian noise and flood the small noise, the small Gaussian noise. So you can make the noise uniform, but you will lose because your noise will be larger. But it's kind of, I mean, you can go from, from Gaussian to uniform noise. And I think there might be also some uh, better ways to do that. So I don't know exactly, but I think, you can prove that it's equivalent to have uh, uniform small noise and small Gaussian noise. Okay, so we still have time for the structural lattices. So let's do another break of three, four minutes, five minutes, and then we will have 20 minutes for the structural lattices. And if you have question again, you can ask or take some coffee or whatever you want. So I have a similar, like the same question that I asked before. So you said that if you take a uniform uh, matrix A, it is easy to solve this or you know, on an average it's easy, but if you take A X plus E, it is hard. So how these do, how, the, how is the structure of these two lattices or what is the thing that's making it difficult from a lattice? Yeah, kind of yeah. So let's take cis because it's easier than LWE. So the cis lattice, so A is indeed uniform in cis, but the lattice you construct here, so if you look at the basis, so maybe I, that's what I wrote on the, I mean, I did on the, oops, share. So the lattice you construct that corresponds to cis is this, <clears throat> sorry, it's the lattice generated by this vector. So it's what we call a QRE lattice. You have a bunch of vectors here that are kind of uniform mod Q. So the first like five vectors, they are uniform mod Q. And then you also add all the Q times identity vectors. And it turns out that the lattice generated by these vectors is hard. So it's not a random lattice where you just sample every coordinate independently because it's you have this big block of identity times Q and you have something here which is not full rank. So it's, yeah, it's different kind of lattice. And, but it's still like a, a random lattice because we sample the first vectors at random. And this random lattice is going to be a hard lattice. So you can prove that if you can find short vectors on average in these random lattices, you can do that for all lattices. And can we distinguish these two lattices? Like just if I, if we say, can we distinguish a hard lattice versus easy lattice. Can we distinguish it easily? 
or you can always uh, run a, a server, a, fine, a, a yeah. short vector solver and see if it stops or not. I mean, this kind of query lattices, you can kind of see that it's query because it's, I mean, everything is, it contains like every, if you multiply by Q, I mean, all the Q vectors are in the lattice. That's the definition of a QRE lattice. It contains like all multiples of Q. So it's like the determinant of this lattice also of the matrix is going to be Q to the uh, M minus N, something like that. So you, you can kind of see that it's not a, a random lattice. If you want to be sure that it's a hard lattice, I mean, something generated from this. Maybe yeah, is the know. intuition that is the intuition that the determinant will be very large because all those diagonal elements are like a big number. So is that intuition or that's not right? Uh, the determinant is not so large. I mean, the determinant is always at least exponential in the dimension because it's a determinant is a product of n coefficients of the matrix. So it's usually, I mean, it's not super large, the determinant. Um, why is it hard? I mean, except from proving that if you can find it here you can find it for all lattices, but the proof is not very intuitive. Like it's a lot of uh, different things. Yeah, I don't really know. Thanks, thanks. I don't actually know even how to prove that this is, I know the proof for LWE, but the proof for this, I don't know if it's simpler. So there is a question in the chat. Is there a notion of equivalence between lattices? So, yeah, so, um, there is kind of notion of equivalence. Like if you have two lattices that are the same up to rotation, you can say somehow that they are equivalent, but it's hard to check that the lattice is another lattice up to rotation. So you can define equivalence of lattices, but it's it's some, not something you can efficiently check actually, which I mean, you can try to build crypto from that also if you if you want. Um, okay, so let's do a bit of structural lattices if we cannot reach C and it's not very important. So um, the previous section was about uh, LWE and CIS, so short integer solution and learning with error. And you can add actually structure to this problem. So I'm going to focus on LWE now because it's uh, maybe the most famous one. And so what is the structure we are going to add? It's a ring structure. So we are going to a polynomial structure, let's say. So we are going to consider this ring. So it's a ring of polynomial with integer coefficients modulo x to the n plus one, where n is a power of two. So essentially elements of these rings, they are polynomials. So, I mean, that's what I wrote. So you can see elements of the ring in two ways. You can see them as polynomials of degree n minus one because you reduce modulo x to the n plus one. So all the polynomials of degree at most n minus one. Uh, you have a representative of degree n minus one at most. Uh, but you can also see the element of the ring as vectors just by taking the vector of all the coefficients of the polynomial of degree n minus one. So you get a vector of dimension n, and this 
I'm going to write with a small arrow to distinguish when I see the elements as polynomial or when I see them as vectors. But the fact that you can see these elements as vectors, it means that you can also see the, some subgroups of R as lattices. By just embedding the elements into vectors, you can have a basis of a lattice. So if you do operation, but yeah, the, the point of having these polynomials is that you, so in a lattice, you can only add or subtract vectors. So here you can also add and subtract polynomials, which means you add and subtract the corresponding vectors, but you can also multiply because you are in a ring. So you can multiply two vectors and then, so you get a polynomial of degree uh, 2n minus two, but then you can reduce modulo xn plus one to go back to a polynomial of degree n minus one. So in terms of vectors, it's not like you multiply the vectors coordinate by coordinate, it's more complex. And just uh, as a small exercise, uh, you can try to, to compute here. So in dimension four, I give you two, two polynomials and ask you to compute the sum. So the sum is easy and the product. So just to, to check that you, you understand how this works. So again, you can write in the chat. Yeah, let's do the, the solution. So, oh, is it what, what was written in the chat? I didn't see. Yeah, so I gave you the solution also for the product, but you can try to see if you find the, the same. So the product is the one which is more complex. You need to, to multiply polynomials and then reduce modulo xn plus one. So xn becomes minus one and etc. I hope I didn't make a mistake when I computed it, but I think it's the result. Okay, so it's not like, yeah, addition is addition of vectors, multiplication is not. Okay. So it gives us some more, more power. And so you can define ring LWE, which is a, a, a structured variant of, uh, of LWE, where, so now I'm not going to sample a matrix, but just a polynomial A, uniform mod Q, two polynomials S and E uniform with small coefficients. And I'm going to, compute the product of A times S, so as polynomials, plus E, and, and that's going to be my, my LWE, my ring LWE instance. So it's uh, in, the, in the ring, but you can also, of course, see this as vectors. So here is a small exercise. If I see AS plus E as a vector, so vector of coordinates, I can write it as some matrix times the coordinates of S plus the coordinates of E. So I, I'm not going to let you wait, I think, for this exercise. But here you can write a matrix, which is this matrix, actually. So if you take this 
circulant matrix. I mean, it's, I think it's called anti-circulant. So the first column, you have coordinates of A, and then you shift everything. And the last coordinate, oh, it should be minus A n, not minus A n minus one, sorry. No, OK, because I start with A zero, so it should be A minus one here. OK, a lot of mistakes, sorry. Uh, then it should be A minus two here and minus a minus one here. So you shift everything and the last coordinate goes at the beginning and with a minus sign. And so here, the first column, it's the coordinates of the vector A. The second column, it's the coordinates of the vector A times X, because when you multiply by X, you just shift all the coordinates and X, the last coordinate become x to the n, but modulo x to the n plus one, it's minus one. So it moves back. And so here you get ax, ax square, etc. And so if you multiply this by s, you are just computing the product of a with s because you are going to get a zero, no, a, sorry, times s zero plus ax times s one plus etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can actually see that this product of polynomials, it can be written as a product of matrix vectors. It's really like the same as LWE, but the matrix here is not a uniform matrix mod Q anymore. It's this matrix where the first column is uniform and then the rest is constructed from the first column. So ring LWE, it's LWE, but with structured matrices. Instead of sampling uniform matrices, you sample a structured matrix. So then the question is, so it's nice because uh, you can have much more efficient protocols by using ring LWE because you multiply polynomials instead of matrices. So it's uh, smaller to store, it's more efficient. Uh, maybe Thomas is going to discuss that. But the question is, uh, how about security? Because clearly, uh, ring LWE is a subset of LWE. It's LWE with some specific matrices with some structure. And is it much easier or is it the same as LWE? The answer for the moment is that the best attacks we have on ring LWE are essentially the same attacks we have on LWE. We just forget about the structure of the matrix and run some lattice reduction algorithm on the lattice corresponding to the ring W instance. And we don't know how to exploit the structure to have better algorithms. So for the moment, ring W is really nice because it's more efficient, but it seems to have the same security guarantees and LW. So that's why it's much more used in, at least for instance, for the, the NIST submission. Uh, most of the submissions use ring LWE or module LWE because it's it's more efficient and probably as, at, for the moment, it's believed to be as secure. Um, yeah, let's do five minutes of intro and then we will conclude. So intro is another problem that uses polynomials. So it's kind of different from what we have seen so far from uh, ring LWE and LW, etc. It's nice to explain. So the prime of n true is the following. I take small polynomials f and g, and I compute f times g minus one mod q. And I say that this looks uniform modulo q. So, uh, yeah, just if you want an example in dimension one, take f is three, g is five, and q is 1031. Then it turns out that uh, f times to g minus one is the inverse of g mod q, right? And then you get something that is 413. It's not small, it's not, yeah, it's something. And you can check that. Uh, if you multiply this by G, you get some by, oh, I wrote it in the wrong way again. If you take, if you do G times H, you get F mod Q. So uh, just, yeah, just a small remark that you, sh I mean, it may seem a bit strange why F times G minus one with G and F small, 
the thing is, maybe it's the simplest thing to do. If you take just H is F with F small, you can distinguish from uniform because F is small. If you take just H is G minus one small, you can just compute H minus one, which is G and it's small. So you can distinguish this from uniform. But G minus one, when you inverse G, when you invert G mod Q, it's going to be large. So when you multiply this by F, then you get something that you don't know how to distinguish from small anymore, from, sorry, from uniform anymore. So each one of F and G minus one is distinguishable, but the product of the two, you don't know how to distinguish from uniform. And from intro, you can construct signatures that are quite efficient. Uh, I don't know if Thomas is going to talk about it, but I think maybe. And just a few words on the hardness of entro. So entro is supposed to be hard um, when the dimension is large again, and the modulus is not too large. But in terms of security, the only thing we know is that it's um, not harder than ring LWE. So you can prove that ring LWE is at least as hard as entro, but we don't know if it's strictly easier or if it's the same level of hardness. So we believe that it's maybe a bit uh, earlier than ring LWE. So it's still a hard problem, but maybe a bit weaker than ring LWE. Okay, so let me conclude. Uh, I don't have a lot to say in conclusion, but essentially what I wanted to for, for you to, to remember is that there is a lot of algorithmic problems defined over lattices. And essentially everything we have seen they are supposed to be hard. Um, not all of them are equivalent, but uh, at least some of them, we know that you can prove that they're equivalent, that LWE and CIS are equivalent to finding short vectors in lattices and closed vectors in lattices. Ring LWE, it's still believed to be hard, but we don't have a proof that it's at least as hard as LWE. And then true, it's also not so clear, but for the moment we don't have algorithms. So you can use this to construct cryptography that is supposed to be post-quantum. And yeah, so the objective of Thomas' talk now is going to be to explain to you how to construct nice cryptographic primitives from all this. And I think that's all I have to say. So if you have any question, any, any more question, you can ask and I will stop. Okay, thank you, Alice, for the very nice talk. I, I really enjoyed it. I think that uh, we all learned a lot and we, I'm, I'm sure we will all revisit this exercise sheet. <laughs> and, uh, and we are very much looking forward to the second talk. For all the participants, like some of you arrived a few minutes late. So um, let me remind, so um, after the Tomas, Thomas talk, we will make a group picture. So um, make sure to, to be there to and um, wear your best clothes and um, brush your hair maybe for the occasion. And do, also remember that uh, we have a surprise this afternoon. So after Thomas uh, talk, um, I have to, we will have, uh, or, and after the lunch break, we will have Or uh, Dunkelman who will give one hour talk. And there will be a surprise after that, that won't be recorded. So it's a one in a, so don't miss it. You won't be able to catch up with this. So mm, uh, Valerie, do you want to make some announcement? Or oh, that's- No, really maybe there was a problem at some point in the program in the webpage. Uh, we start after lunch at uh, 1.30, not not too like yesterday, but at 1.30. Okay, but, but this is with Or Dunkelman. Like now we meet in half an hour, okay, yes. for Thomas, uh, Thomas' talk. Okay, 
See you, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you.